Good afternoon and welcome to the Australian Ultimate Championships 2024. It's semi-final time and we've got a David and Goliath battle, a Cinderella story, whichever way you want to cut it. It's uh, one of the tournament favourites. The Goliath is Ellipsis and the Cinderella David is Fishwick. I'm joined by Oakley Marlin. Oakley, Fishwick probably the surprise package out of the open side uh, this tournament. What have you seen from him? Yeah, so I said to... Um said on the stream earlier and it's been a little bit of a theme throughout this tournament is this has been a tournament of unpredictability and I think Fishwick have provided that unpredictability. We saw them take two universe point wins on Friday against some big names. Uh, they got up on the Hoss Boys and up on one of the Sunder teams. Uh, they went down on universe to Sublime early on Friday morning. Uh, just here I see their team <coughs> list. So as we saw them on the stream uh, yesterday, we're going to expect big things from Shallard. Uh, we saw Blacklock's name coming up a lot. Hatfield, Sambridge doing a lot of work, also with Captain Andrew Jackson. Yeah, Sambridge and Jackson, both their captains, both probably best on, supported by Shallard yesterday. And we saw Fishwick on the stream yesterday. Um, interesting game against Mammoth. They were up early, uh, lost it, and then came back. Ellipsis men, tell us what you know about them, Moz. Yeah, so pretty deep list, um, but also a few injuries. So John McNaughton not in this game. Pete Ely will be out for the game as well. Um, but in terms of people that are playing, uh, obviously Tom, Rob Andrew, Don, John O'Keys. Um, uh, I would say Matt Daly's actually had a really good tournament as well. I didn't know much about Matt coming in, but um, he's been a really, um, almost like their third tall target. So, you know, you know you've got to get to McGucket, you know you've got to get to Rob, obviously. Um, but Matt's taken a few good grabs and uh, played some good D as well. And I guess that's something that you want on your roster is you want a lot of depth where you have a lot of people that you can rely on. Uh, I can only imagine that Fishwick are going to try and shut down some in, you know, some key matchups to try and shut down you know the likes of Rob Andrews deep as we know that he's one that they like to hit. So it's really good that you can have another option stepping up into that role should, uh, should he be shut down in that capacity. And we will do our best to bring you scores from the other fields. The other semi has started and they've already made a call, which is good. Good sign. Uh, the other semi being the boys of Hot Chili versus Sunder Slice. But when you were about to say Hot Chili, I thought you were going to say Hoss because that would be wrong. <laughs> you would have been right at 10-4, uh, but unfortunately for Heads of State, they bottled that one. Uh, and fortunately for Chile, one of the all-time comebacks, one for the ages, they uh, they won their quarter when they were gone for all money. So definitely deserve to be there. So, yes, we'll try and bring you those updates from other fields as we can. We have some roving reporters around at the moment. Game setting up nicely. I think Fishwick are going to have the pull here. <laughs> and we're away. Out the back of the end zone, Moz. Whoa. We saw it a um, we saw it a couple of times in the um, quarter. So I think teams used to a bit more breeze, but this one's just uh, we've seen a few sail right out the back. No real wind to speak of for the the crew that keep asking me what's going on with the wind. Stark Somewhat for least facetiously, I think. Stark contrast to what we've seen over the past couple of days, however, with that wind. Yeah. So, Ellipsis have dropped right back. A few people going under. Tom, filthy push pass to start the game to John O'Keys. And we see the first big shot go up, and that's really easy. That's a nice early score. One point offense from the Ellipsis boys there. Yeah, I think there was a bit of miscommunication in the, in the backfield from, uh, from Fishwick. I just gave you the wind report, Liam Haberfield. Only got one wind report every couple of minutes. Wait, wait, two minutes. Um, yeah, pretty easy point. Not uh, not ideal from Fishwick if you're trying to set up a uh, set up a bit of pressure. No mark on the throw. Fair bit of separation on the deep. Probably want to take one of those two away, if not both, ideally. Looks like a bit of a misread from the Fishwick defender there. Uh, John O'Keefe's putting up a massive <coughs> backhand. But the Fishwick defender misread and ended up accidentally or maybe purposefully on the back foot of Rob Andrews. 
which when you're going up for not an aerial contest, that's no. not the position you want to be no. in. List of places you want to be. That ain't that ain't top of the list. All right, so let's uh, just say the Fishwick were easing into it. We'll get a check now on their offense. Their offense needs to come um, come out switched on because if you go down a couple of breaks, it's very hard to uh, get yourself back into it unless you're Chile versus Haas. I, you know what? I'll just I'll get over it. Sorry. Still cuts pretty deep. Not gonna lie. Still a bit of a fresh wound, is it, Moz? Oh. I took the next game off. I probably should have taken two. As we see AJ with the disc, a lot of space in the middle of the field. Hatfield is cut a fell, which is unfortunate. So it's stagnated a little bit. AJ gets out to the break side, gets it. Two go deep, but AJ's seen enough to like it. Nice long grab, Jack Donnelly. Shellard gave him room, trusted Donnelly to get it. It's probably more Shellard's disc than Donnelly's, but they've moved it through. And the flick to AJ. AJ moving as well as he has in the last few years. He throws the flick wide. And that's a goal. Nice grab to make sure of it. Not 100% sure who the receiver was there. I think try and get the number on his back. Jack Donnelly. Jack Donnelly doing some work on the offensive line there. Fishwick responding in kind. Anything you can do, Ellipsis, we can also do. getting absolutely flamed in the chat. People asking for wind reports and then asking for Hoss v Chile score updates. <laughs> Those wounds are still very fresh, team, so uh, I don't want to have to block and ban you and report you out of the <laughs> YouTube feed, but I will. Actually, I don't even know if I've got uh, the rights to, but anyway. You don't have admin rights there, Moz. No, uh, you and you shouldn't give someone like me that, that kind of uh, power that I absolutely abuse. We appreciate the banter on the chat. Yes, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Already a hundred and only watching. I think we topped out yesterday and today at about 3.50 for the uh, final pool game featuring uh, Ellipsis as well as this morning's quarter. Let's continue to build on that. On serve, one apiece. No win to speak of. Absolutely nothing. Bone still. Which is perfect conditions for ultimate. Uh, very, very different to what we saw on Friday with the torrential rain that was coming through. Yeah, and even yesterday to an extent. Yes, yeah, not, a, not a cloud in the sky. Oh, a massive pull. John O'Keys to Cupcake. Oh, better start from, Ellipsi, uh, from uh, Fishwick on the defensive intensity. A little dishy dump back to John O. Max Holden coming to you around, but there's McGuckin. Cupcake going down the line, working hard, but he gets the dump back to Keys. Loses a bit of ground, but he's okay with that. Daly on the far sideline. No mark, can throw what he wants right now. Halden. There's Keys again, open side dump. Surveying the field, hammers up. Got McGuckin underneath it. Good bid from Blacklock. It went early, no, he knew he needed to. And whilst I'd say that's a better point from Fishwick in terms of a bit of their defensive intensity, if I'm ellipsis, I'm pretty chilled. Like, working it up to the brick mark. I know that was a break hammer into the end zone, uh, but even prior to that, the, uh, the connections were coming pretty easy. Some pretty easy offense, as you said there, Moz. Um, and they looked comfortable. They didn't look like they were they were stressed. They were, you know, the stall count never got to a point where they looked like they were panicking at all. No. So both teams just settling in, trying to find their groove. And you always see this happening the first few points in a game. Teams trying to figure out what each other are going to do, what they're expecting to see, especially uh, especially when the conditions have changed so vastly. So, Oakley, what game was on immediately prior to this one? Because all I can see, I look in the sideline, all I can see are about 13 identical pink water bottles, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me when uh, you're trying to find your water bottle and it's just... Uh, in the sea of uh, water bottles. So just prior to this, we had Rogue versus Factory Flash, and it was an absolute nail biter going down to a universe point where Rogue came out with the win. With the win, rather. Fumble there from Fishwick, yeah. but they managed to get the disc moving. It's on this close sideline. Centers back to Jackson. Oh, it's playing really good match day in the middle here. Oh! McGuckin trying to get the D on Shallard. Andrew's trying to get the D on Jackson. McGuck 
Duncan. Hard work up there. He's going to get big. Too floaty from yeah. Jackson. And it moved away from Shell. The, the, the curl actually needed to be outside in. That had probably more inside out on it. Yeah, it didn't give uh, Shell a look. Cupcake here bringing the disc in right at half of the field. Copland working hard on the dump. Gets the dump backhand. Cupcake gets it oh. right back again. Close there. Spartos. On the far sideline, McGuckin to Andrews. Argy Bargy on the dump there with Cupcake and Spartos. Yeah, well, Cupcake was giving it back the other way, so I reckon that's fair play. Both players are uh, staying within the limit. Nice around backhand to Lochnan. They've got to stop these breaks. There's another one. Another break goes up. Oh, just toes it in. Andrews with the kick celebration. It's really uh, established a place in our game, the kick spike. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's kind of the football slash rugby background that we've got, but the kick spike, uh, and I'm here for it. I don't know if everyone's big about spiking, and, and, and you definitely don't want to, uh, what's it called, rim spike it, because then you tarco the disc, and that's just a bit of a, a tool move. But uh, I don't mind the old kick spike. As long as it's done in celebration and yeah, fair play. Don't kick it at someone, but yeah. I'm all for it. I'd love to see again, though, Moz, the, um, the Sandbridge celebration. Oh, yeah. The guy that pulls the, the party the, How he does the little flicky yeah. flicky thing up into his hand. Love to see that again. Love to get it on the uh, get it on the cam if we can. Yeah. Well, we just need him to score a goal. <coughs> so, ellipsis. Up, uh, hold, sorry. Hold on that one. So, Fraser Wigney, I think, on the field. Team favourite. Also a team favourite with the Mudlarks, I believe. An affinity between Fraser and the, uh, the Div 2 four-time national champions. Coming fresh off their last championship last weekend. Some good stats there, Moz. Thank you. All right. Ellipsis, they brought that, uh, that's, that's semi-final level intensity on the defence, and we probably haven't seen that yet out of Fisher. That's, that's a difference so far. That absolutely is semi-final level defence. Early days. Jackson. Tight marks here from the Ellipsis boys. Shallard. <laughs> Young there. Goes all oh, the beautiful inside to Jackson. Getting big. Is Jack Donnelly. Jackson on the far side line being marked by Andrews. So it's Farnas in the dump space. But he, he throws it up. He's got Hatfield. Hatfield. Good boy, Mikey. Good job there from the from the Fish Week boys. They used the field and the space wisely. Yeah, I mean, I was having a chat to AJ before the game and I said, you know, how are you going to jag this? And he said his view, um, correct or not, was that ellipsis are going to be running some pretty short lines. So he was more thinking about the entire game, more of attrition stuff. If he can get their key players like Keys, like Andrews, like Cupcake, get them tired so that in those last few points of the game, that's where maybe the fatigue and the mistakes come out because Fishwick do have a slightly uh, deeper roster. Um, hopefully they just maintain enough proximity that they themselves don't have to shorten lines. And just some scores coming in from other fields. We have an update that uh, it's two apiece between Manly and Sunder Dice and also two apiece between uh, the Hoss Boys and Melbourne Juggernaut and Sublime. Some close games happening on the other fields and we'll continue to keep you updated as it unfolds. And as we say that, it's also a close game here. Ellipsis up 3-2. Just one break so far. Which absolutely means nothing at this early point yeah. in the game, Moz. Yeah. Yeah. Because as we've seen previously, Fishwick can certainly bring this back, and they have done it before. Multiple universe point games throughout the tournament so far. Cupcake picking it up, centering to Keys. Finds held and he's trying to move it quickly. Keys. Oh, goes for the cheeky inside but doesn't put it. Helden again. Loses a bit of ground to go back to Keys and Helden goes back for the 
dump in the center of the field. Cupcake trying to get free, and he does. He's, dump is now setting in. Oh, and beautiful around Lovely. flick there to Daly. Inside backhand. Disc is there with McGuckin. Oh, he goes inside worm backhand burner. to Keys. Absolute worm burner. Scuba. Scuba over the top there to Bill Foreman. There's something for everyone there. That's better. Oh, they didn't. They didn't get the turn. Um, they obviously didn't break. But that's better. That's getting towards that defensive intensity. A couple of bids. Um, forced out a couple of not 100% throws. Um, so, yeah, like you said, we were early into this game. Fishwick just, just one break. Keep your, keep your heads up. That's exactly right. And one break is definitely something you can come back from. We've seen so far, though, three assists from John O'Keys out of the four goals that the Ellipsis men have scored. Yeah. He's absolutely working hard for the Ellipsis offense. Uh, so for those asking, yes, the Chile and uh, Sunday game is going on at the moment on the other field. We will be bringing you those updates as they come through. Nothing received thus far, unfortunately, Finish. but as soon as we have Did something, we'll let you know. Go Ellipsis hey, oh, boys coming out on defense. We don't um, we don't have a score, but we know Sunder are up one break. Thank you for that, Intel Moz. We'll try and get a score as soon as we can. Perler of a pull well into the end zone there. Jackson in the center of the field. Oh, he looked like he was going to wind up for something. But instead, he goes back. Oh! Overthrow, miscommunication, and Copland. Gets on his guts for it. Yeah, well, he, he moved Svados out of the way. He didn't bump him deliberately, but Svados wanted to go one way. The throw went the other. So he kind of had nowhere to go. He's going to catch the goal. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Jake Klukin absolutely there. Did everything hard and then kind of just swatted his hand past it. Instead, Copland now has double happiness. And Ellipsis jump out to a 5-2 lead. That's so unfortunate there for Dane Kluke, and especially when you're the defender, Moz, and you just tip it, or you just, yeah. you know, dink the disc. Yeah, he just And almost make it easier for the, off, for the offense to catch. Well, the first thing is he recognized the play. Then he was able to do something about it. Then he was able to avoid contact. So you've got to think about even this checklist you've got to go through, because you don't want to clean up the receiver, because they've got absolutely no idea where you are. You've got the duty of care in that scenario. Um, and then he just missed the D. That's right. And so I think there's been a timeout call from Fishwick, which is unsurprising here, Moz. Uh, you heard some insights into the Fishwick uh, timeouts and circles uh, the other day on the other stream. And you uh, expressed that there was a bit of colorful language Oh, yeah, they're, they're not afraid to wear their hearts on their sleeves. Um, I wouldn't say they're orators of our time. I don't think it was... They're not bashing down the door of Mensa with some of the language, but anyway. Um, no, they're passionate. Oh, yeah. I don't need to be over there. I can hear it from here this time. And um, hopefully, so long as our mics don't pick it up. Apologies if you do hear something. But um, it's a lot of aggressive positivity. Probably the best way to explain that. 5-2. Not, Not the place you want to be in, in a semi-final, Moz. Yeah, well, Link's already written them off in the chat. 5-2, he thinks that's done. I wish that was the case about three hours ago. We know. love your enthusiasm, Link. We absolutely love no, it. I'm just going <laughs> to... I'm just... Uh, I'll clip that. Just screenshot that for posterity. See, Miss Phillips as well, donning her Fishwick jersey. Getting involved in their chats. Mish is. Mish is on the far sideline here, just to our left behind Woodley. See her on the screen here. She's in her Fishwick jersey. She played with them at Nationals uh, a year or two ago. Never knew that. Right. Can get around on a few teams, Mish. She does. And you know what? I'm about it. I'm more a one-club kind of player. I wonder who that is. 
Yeah. Well, mainly because none of the other ones will take me, so <laughs> I don't really have a choice. Make my bed, I'll sleep in it. That's fine. Hey, if you know how many, uh, we'll have a um, a little trivia quiz. How many teams has Mish Flips played for? Bonus points if you name the international ones as well, because I think she's been around. Uh, the Colombian teams and the Japanese teams. Be an interesting piece of knowledge to know as that pull rolls out the back of the end zone. So we're going to see Andrew Jackson walk it to the front line of the end zone. Uh, the thing with those pulls, I guess it works the defense's advantage is that they get to set up before the disc is checked in, that the offense doesn't get that movement, but it doesn't seem to matter for Jack Donnelly as he gets a nice gainer on the under. Gets the dump back to Jackson. Sandbridge, oh, with a little jink there, gets a nice inside. That's a good cut. Alex Young on the far sideline. He's looking to dump it back pretty quickly, though. Oh! Okay. John and just an underthrow slightly <laughs> uh, on the inside there. Tried to thread the inside to Jackson, but John O'Keefe's read it like a book. I was saying this on the last uh, Lipsis game. John O' just got such great balance, uh, not only when he's throwing, but defensively as well. Able to get horizontal. And we might oh! see another one. Had to give up a lot of ground to Copland. But he recovers it to Bill Foreman. And he puts it. That's a goal. <clears throat> uh, high disc going to Rob Andrew. You can, I, I reckon 99 times out of 100 you can call that. So Goliath certainly taking it, sticking it to David so far. The biblical reference. For anyone who wasn't aware. Yeah. Uh, only 20 minutes in and Ellipsis are up 6-2. They're, they're quick point, yeah. They're very quick points and they've really pulled away so far. Uh, as we've headed into finals, we've had the game times change up slightly. So we're now playing 100-minute games, um, which at this point in time doesn't seem to matter. It doesn't look like we're going to need that extra time so far unless unless the defence absolutely starts to change. So uh, how's this for... Uh Symmetry, Sunderer leading Chile 5-2 in the other game. So uh, up until very recently, identical scores. So we'll continue to bring you those updates. If we get any updates on what's happening on any other fields, we'll let you know what's happening. But so far we're seeing the Ellipsis men start to run away with it. They're really stamping dominance and their defense is shutting down a lot of the Fishwick options. Uh, a lot of big bids and plays so far, and a lot of people getting on their guts. They're really, really wanting it. They're hungry for the disc. Another big pull. Sandbridge quickly moves it to Jackson. And he jacks it. Andrew Jackson jacks it. Good cut. Shellard. That's a goal. Making quick work of that one. That's not bad. That That'll keep them in touch. And that's what they needed. Fishwick needed that. Need to get their intensity back up, get their spirits high, try and bring those good vibes back. Here's the replay. Sandbridge moves it quickly to Jackson. John O'Keys came in for the oh, slightly on the mark, but took Sandbridge instead, which opened up Jackson with no mark, so he could throw absolutely whatever he wanted. So Ellipsis are up two breaks now. Uh, sorry, up three breaks now. Um, and Fishwick have just held. We'll continue to bring you stats throughout the game as we can. We've got Avril Tam on stats here so far, doing a wonderful job for us. Here we see that big one deep from Rob Andrews. Fishwick coming out on defense. Ellipsis boys absolutely ready. Uh, streaming towards half. In the placing games for the unsuccessful quarterfinal teams, Manly and Dice are trading to a piece, as are Juggernaut and Sublime to a piece. Guts gone. 
Daly on the far sideline. He's looking for an inside. Oh, overthrows McGuckin, though. So this is going to be our first time, I think, seeing uh, Fishwick's defensive O-line. And expecting to see big things from them because they need to. They need to absolutely... Oh, That'll hang up. Almost overthrows Sandridge, but he gets on his guts. And, and throws a nice composed throw. That's sometimes harder. Sandbridge is gone for the jinky up the line, but he overlooks, finds Whitney. And he gets, oh, he gets it. Just bumped out of, like, the inside of his hand there. And it just went shooting up, and he couldn't regain composure. Well, I see marking to it. Oh, stop that wide one, yeah. That just lets all the pressure off and allows Ellipsis's offense to set up daily. Got it wide. Gives a little bit of shake and bake. Oh. Big bid, but it's safe. Foreman moves it to Keys. Keys gets a bit of attention on the mark, plays through it. Throws a safe one back to McGuckin. McGuckin back to Keys, where from where it came from. And again, oh. Keys second to score, his second scuba. He's finding it easy out there. Cheeky scoops in this game, and does that indicate to you, Moz, just how comfortable the Ellipsis boys are feeling out there on the field? Yeah, yeah, they're playing with freedom. They're not taking the mickey, but they're certainly just, you know, throwing the throws that'll score the goals. Creative license, if you would. Yes. So as we see the replay there, dump to McGuckin, go straight back to Keys, cheeky scoop over, and there's the score. So. Ellipsis knocking on the door of half time here, and not a lot of time has passed. Now they've been quick points, they've both been ways. Very quick points, and we're nearly at half time. This could be a very quick semi final. Yeah, and I think you're seeing a, uh, a pretty animated, we'll get a shot of him soon. We're seeing a pretty animated Andrew Jackson having a chat to David. Um, as we see, night? yeah, John O'Keys here, four assists and one block so far in this game. He's absolutely dominating the O-line. Or the offense, the offensive points here for Ellipsis. Uh, another timeout called. Yeah, Not I mean, surprising. Well, yeah, exactly. I think to your point, the game's just flying by, um, which is great if you're Ellipsis. But if you're Fishwick, you go, well, hold on, this is just going to slip away from us before we know it. So let's slow it down. Try and... Um, put some different plans together. And when we look back to Fishwick's pool play, they had four universe point games. Yes. Um, high scoring universe point games. Uh, what do you think, Moz, is the impact of that now in the latter parts of the tournament? Well, it's a good question. I, they've got numbers. So if this was, if this was you know, 2010 um, IBEM, right, where you got 14 blokes, they'd be knackered. They wouldn't have anything left in the tank. Because they do have a big squad, and I believe that they play through majority of their squad, um, I actually think you, you use that as a positive. I, I think the belief and the, the kind of mental grit you get from it outweighs the fatigue. Exception might be if you're someone like an AJ who was probably on for the majority of those points. But based off what we've seen this morning, like he doesn't look like he's struggling, you know. So that's exactly right. He does not look like he's struggling at all. Fishwick just needs to continue to lift that intensity and match that of the ellipsis boys, ellipsis men out there. Sunder are uh, starting to put a hurting on Chile here, seven two. Thank you for that update there, Moz. We'll be keeping that one coming. So I know multiple people are interested in hearing the outcome of that game. So we know what's happening tomorrow. Floaty pull comes down, quick one to AJ. Big mark from Cupcake, really taking away the options down the field. Finds Fardos. Oh, Shallard absolutely oh, puts it up, but I think it's gone. It's gone over in the field yonder. Yeah. So that was actually Hatfield to Shallard. Oh, sorry. No, well Shallard was his uh, was his Receiver. target, and he had the um, he had a lot of separation. We'll see him coming to shot here. He's got a good. Oh, almost 10 metres on his player. All that needed to do was stay in, but it didn't. And that's not the first time we've seen the uh, the disc go in the wrong direction, where it's uh, just spun out of field, floated the wrong way on those uh, up the line or down the line options. So Ellipsis 
gaining a fair bit of ground as Cupcake brings that one forward. Uh, some questions about the ground conditions. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking at a two. Good firm track, some grass coverage. Definitely not a heavy track. Oh. Big, big. Bill Foreman okay. now floats it out for Cupcake on this close sideline and he winds up. Got Andrews deep and straight in the bread basket. Wasn't a lot of um, pressure on that catch there. No, uh, well, I just I think the players misread it. Both of the Fishwick defenders, I think they went in under to go early, but they didn't realise how much it was turning. Um, great shot from Tuart as well because AJ was horizontal. He, he faked out wide. AJ beat on the mark, so Tom knew he had to release it at, uh, at full stretch. Uh, and just like that, we're at 8-3. So we see it on the replay there. That's exactly right. And then you see, Mc I think it's McGuckin at the back. Oh, it's McGuckin at the back, yeah. yes. No one, yeah, you're right. No one, no one really made a bid. I think they kind of looked at each other and thought, well, I thought you were going to go. It's a semi-final, lads. You both go. You both and if go, you hit each exactly. other, okay, good. Um, the other thing about ellipses, though, is just how they... Th they use so much of the field, upfield, backfield, laterally. Like that was pretty much sideline to sideline. As we see, McGuckin's putting up some stats of his own. Two goals, two assists and one block. He'll screenshot that and uh, send it to his family. It's only half an hour into this game and we've About already half. hit half yeah. time. With a couple of timeouts. With a couple of timeouts already. Ellipsis are making really quick work of this. Really quick work. You can see them really just having, you know, really relaxed half time. Then there's not a lot of chat happening. <laughs> oh, they're just some real comedians on the feed today. That's oh, all. Are they? Are you copping it still, Mike? Uh, yeah, but at least this one has. There's a little bit of um, uh, intelligence behind this one for a change. Lippy in danger of getting a 10-4 lead. Oh. Of course, the lead that uh, a team that shall remain nameless. Piddled away. We appreciate the banter. Keep it coming. Oh, keep the keep it comments we like it. coming we through. Like it. We do enjoy it. Everyone deals with grief in a different way. I use humour. And as we speak of keeping it coming through, the Ellipsis boys are going to look to keep that pedal to the metal, Moz. Yeah, I mean, they've got everything on their own terms here. Um, I, I think it's a bit jarring just how quickly the points have gone. And look, um, Fishwick have been contributing to that. They've had a couple of three-pass offences. Um, but it's their defence. They've got to at least, I mean, and that's what AJ said at the start, you've got to at least keep their O out on the field. Get them tight. That's your only chance. Otherwise, you're going to blink and this, this final will be over. I mean, I'll still send the invoice for my time. Anyway, I don't care. I don't go home early. <laughs> but I think everyone, including myself, would rather see... Uh, would rather see a, uh, a bit of a tighter battle. And we've seen a lot of tight battles on this field so far, Moz. Um, we haven't had many games. Well, we have had games where it's looked like it's going to happen, going to go over quite quickly, and then it always seems to claw back. And we saw that with the Mammoth Fishwick game, mm. where Fishwick uh, was up, yep. Mammoth came back, and then Fishwick got up on Universe. So... We know that Fishwick are capable of, of doing some big things and bringing those score lines back. Yeah, and that's the point I was trying to make earlier to go, hey, we've been here, not necessarily down because they were up early, but you don't go through four universe point gains with facing some, you know, ask, having some pretty tough questions asked of you. Um, so I wouldn't be treating themselves as out of it. It's uh, It'd be nice to have a couple more and, and uh, yeah, there's some really expert... Um, coaching coming through that we should, someone should tell Fishwick they have to score more points if they want to win. I'll pass that on. Uh, I'm not sure which Fishwick player I'll pass that on to. One that's smaller than me, I reckon. Uh, wasn't sure that that was how the game worked, was you know? Yeah. If only we could all figure that out. I've got a certain team that I wouldn't mind telling, but anyway. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. The hurt's still coming through there. Yeah. I was I was impartial during the call, so I can be partial now. And that's completely fine. So this half time is going to be coming to an end now. We see Ellipsis getting back out on the field. Admiral, do you have any stats you want to talk through?
going to be bringing on Avril Tam here, talking through a few stats for us. Yeah, so as we saw on the early infographics, John O'Keefe's for Lipsis absolutely lighting it up with four assists and one massive layout block. Um, Sam McGuckin also doing his bit. Um, he's had two scores, one assist and also one block. Um, Tim Copland with the other big block for Lipsis. So the big boy's getting it done. Thank you for that, Avril. So we see it here on the screen. Uh, clean, three clean holds apiece. Uh, a few break chances for both teams. Fishwick have not taken any of their four break chances. But Lipsis have done four of their seven break chances. And that's how we see the scoreline that we do. I think that's most of the story. You know, like, okay, your O's been scored on, but zero from four break chance. I didn't actually think it was that um, that intense. Um, that's there. Yeah, that's really surprising. Can I get in on some of that coke when when you when you crack it? Not right now. Just just. just go. I didn't. I didn't want it until. Yeah, I know you asked me, but then you know you see it. And, it's uh, a can of coke for anyone wondering online. Thank you, Katie Locke, for bringing that one to me. So both teams here in their huddles. Uh, probably lots of different things being said, though, from both teams. I can imagine the advice coming from Ash Sullivan, Ellipsis men's coach, is to keep the pressure down, keep, uh, keep that defensive pressure and getting those big blocks. I'm, uh, not, I'm not sure if this has happened before, but Ash Sullivan just took Ellipsis to a Div 2 title seven days ago uh, as a coach. Geelong? Yeah, sorry, what did I say? Ellipsis. You said Ellipsis, yeah, Geelong? The Mudlarks. Yep. Uh, would he be the first coach to win back-to-back -back Div 2, Div 1 titles? That's a nice uh, nice little flex. I'll be that putting that is. on the CV. Um, if anyone knows if it's been done before, please uh, pop it in the comments and tell us if you know um, of any coaches and, and, you know, flex their name and we'll give them a shout-out. So I think Ellipsis come out on D here, Moz. It's the one thing I need to get better at is What's remembering that? who starts on O. It's, it's, well, actually, I need to get better at a lot of things, but uh, <laughs> to be honest, one thing at a time. So, yes, Ellipsis men coming in on defense. Avril here confirming because she's been keeping the stats Avril's for us. Avril's got it together. Thank you, Avril. Uh, are Fishwick going to keep the clean hold? Oh, no. <laughs> well, we're going to wel welcome in uh, John McNaughton. John, uh, not playing this weekend, but come up to support the team. Uh, you must be happy with uh, seeing a pretty uneventful first half in a good way. Look, it's always ideal to see your team doing extremely well. Uh, yeah, 8 3 is a good place to be. It's, it's also a very early 8 3. I think uh, by the time we hit uh, half, the, the game's only been going half an hour. Yep. So, nice quick points. Um, did you know any of what the plan for the second half is? <laughs> Look, when you're up 8-3, the, the plants probably keep doing the same thing you're doing, but better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, defensive energy, sideline intensity, um, nothing particularly special at this point. We're not going to make many changes when we're going well. Well done, well, good luck, but we are, uh, from an entertainer's point of view, we hope it gets a little closer. <laughs> no doubt. Thanks, mate. So Jackson here with the disc on this close sideline, throws a big floaty backhand. Oh, That's Sambridge good. just couldn't quite get underneath that. That was a tough one. It was a tough one, and Ellipsis get it, you know, within a quarter of the field to their end zone. Ah, oh, stall nine, Hail Mary, as we just yeah. heard. That'll do it. As Lochnan's bringing it in, he looks for an immediate dump to Copland, but he's covered quite... Oh! That was a great... Beating D there from Jack Donnelly. <laughs> and Andrew Jackson puts really, it up. He's really. got Alex Young who eats that up. Oh, is he? Oh. He's got it. Go. Smartos. AJ is going mental. He went mental on the field because everyone stopped because of the contact. They thought, was it, was it going to be a foul call? AJ with the veteran move saying, there is no foul, I'm running to this disc. And then he absolutely fed it to his downfield defender saying, you go. Then he threw. And then the, uh, yeah, so watch this, AJ. <laughs> Basically scaring his teammate into cutting. 
Nice chase. Nothing that Lockton could do about that. No, no. And that bid, it was a shoulder height bid from Jack Donnelly on Tim Copland there. Nice little bit of feedback for your teammate there, just to cut, in, gentle encouragement to cut, AJ. Yep, yeah, it was noted. So just getting some more stats here of the four points on the board for Fishwick. Jackson has thrown three of them. Yeah, he's definitely come to play. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would have said this pre-game. It's probably no more um, profound now, but Fishwick don't win if AJ doesn't play well. You know, that's 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 just a given. He's he's their best. Uh, yeah, you'd say their best player on the on the roster. Uh, he needs to have a blinder for them to be any chance. Uh, across on the other field, uh, Sunder starting to put some paint on Chile. It's eight two at half. And so we've got Halden here in this close sideline cupcake. There going back to Max Halden. The Fishwick. Whoa, there's a bit of bargy there between Keys in the centre of the field. Halden getting every second disc at the moment. There we go, back to Cupcake. Back to Halden. A little bit of give-go action. He's very good at that, Max. Oh! <laughs> Tom Tullin looked like he was falling over and still somehow he was already managed down. to catch the disc from his knee. He was already on the ground. Just a stuck the juke up. A little bit of disbelief there. Get that one on the replay if we can and just... Just as we see it here, some give goes between Toolett and Halden. Toolett and Halden going the whole way down the field. And he comes again, trips over the Fishwick defender's foot and catches it almost from the ground. He's not happy about it. And the reason he's not, Tom likes one thing more than scoring it. It's looking good. Looking good. That and doesn't he does, look it good. doesn't look good. You, you just kind of look like you got put on skates a bit. I mean, it's a great grab, but yeah, he wasn't happy about it because... He'd much rather be gratuitously laying out than uh, kind of scrambling on all fours. Tripping over. So we just have some more stats coming in now. Oh, yeah, stats on Tom Tuller. One goal, one assist. Has been a little bit quiet this game so far. But, hey, if you don't need to, if you don't do it, as um, he walks past the commentary booth. That was Oakley saying you were quiet, not me. Cheeky so some back. stats coming in from the other fields. We have Dice Up 7 on Manly 6. And Juggernaut and Sublime at five apiece. Thank you for those roving stats yes. there, Simon Talbot. We appreciate the work that you're putting in for us. Getting the inside scoop. They're the hardest games to play, those ones. You, you've dropped a quarter. You're not even playing for a medal. You're playing for the fivals. And at least in the nineals, you're kind of in the beer, what used to be called the beer bracket. The beer bracket, you, you, yeah. Your weekend's done. You can go and have some fun. Uh, but it's a tough slog, those games. As we see AJ taking it. Nice early gain of cut, and then AJ up the line. Oh. He's got... Uh, Head Shallard Shallard, streaming. Yeah. That's a great throw from AJ. Svados there. He's got no one in the deep space, though, so he dumps it back to Jackson. Was looking for Hatford on the around, but did not go for that either. A lot of jinky no. movement in that handler space, and he goes up. Finds the up there to Alex Young, and he gets it in That'll to do. Dane Klukin. That'll do. 9-5. Clean hold for Fishwick, and they do need to have some more clean offensive holds because if they get turnovers... The Ellipsis boys are not giving it back. Yeah, and that makes me think how long until AJ needs to start playing both sides of the disc coming on for O and D as well because there's only six more points that, uh, that Ellipsis need. So if I was the coach, I'd be putting AJ on at both ends. But, the, and the question here, Moz, is if you do that and Fishwick get the win, you risk burnout. Is it, you know... Going into a, I mean, I guess going into a final tomorrow, and that's your last game, and it's your only option. You sometimes have to take it. Yeah. Yeah, I think you'd be to ask AJ, hey, do you want to have a good crack at a final, being absolutely gassed? We'll be nice and fresh for the bronze medal match. You'll probably take the former, but uh, AJ has a bit of an ego, so you know, he's you're not wrong there. In. You'd rather the clean gold than the dirty gold. 
So Fishwick have clawed back a couple, her doing a nice job. That is a monster pull. Cupcake fielding nicely. Centers quickly to John O'Keys. Max Haldon trying to get involved. A bit of a junky look here from the Fishwick boys. A bit of a poachy junky look. Swan with the disc goes back to Cupcake. They're losing ground into the end zone. Over to McGuck, a very blady forehand. Dishy to Swan through to Keys, looking to move it quickly. Back over to Toolet. That junkie sets in, that junkie zone. I don't mind it. It's worth a look. Like, you've got to change something. And if at least, like we were saying before, slow the points down. That's exactly right. And it has happened as we see that they have had to lose some ground on these dumps as Keys came. Oh, beautiful oh, insight to Halden. McGuckin there had someone on his heels. Halden again. <laughs> tries to tow it in. It's from not the elegant corner, that one, is it? From Andrews. He dumps it back to Toolet. Happy to lose a bit of ground. Andrews doing some jinky movement and Toolet. Second goal for the game. Moves it to 10 5. Scoreline starting to blow out here now, Moz. Yeah, I think you start putting AJ both sides of the disc. Did I mention that one? No. You have a few times, actually, okay. but that's all right. Well, it's not getting through to them, so. Moz knows best. He's continuing to provide his oh, well. insights. He's only coached multiple Australian teams and campaigns. Picked up a bronze medal at Worlds, you know, no big deal. Does know what he's talking about. No, I wouldn't go that far. Only sometimes. Just, just real enough. <laughs> there were assistant coaching roles, right? So my <laughs> opinion was given, not always taken. Rarely taken. So Rob Andrews here, three goals and two assists. He's putting the work in for this ellipsis side. And we are seeing... Is he three and two? He's... he's tough yeah. Right. Exactly. And, you know, we, we've seen some big things as well from, you know, John O'Keefe's... You know, we're, we've got the same names kind of coming over and over again. So Rob Andrews and John O'Key is kind of dominating the assists here. We have a tennis the ball on the man. field. Who is this? Oh my God. Crank have uh, filed a protest on the field via tennis ball. There's a little bit of interference, but we've sorted it out. Who brings a tennis ball to a frisbee tournament? Oh, it depends if you've got your doggos on the sideline there, Moz. AJ. He's winding up for something. AJ There's on his bike. Oh, slight overthrow. Ooh. It'll be a strip ball. No, he's out. It was, looked like there was going to be a call there from Hatfield, but I think it was a clean D from Lou. Yeah. I don't blame Mikey. I know why he called it, because there was contact, but I think he realised that the Lucas player got to it first. So, good withdrawal. Hello. Great D team. there from Andrew Catchpole. Just a little bit too much float on that dump and he was able to get a hand in front of Tim Coughlin. There has been a, been a trip in the centre of the field before the disc even the disc came into even play. In. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> AJ just about went to pick it up, saw the trip and went, and went no, nah. I'll, let it, I'll let it sit there for a second. I don't want to, yeah, just make this clear. Keep the stall count at zero. I mean, Let's just have it all on their, their terms right now. But the one adjustment you'd want to make, AJ is, is throwing, and as soon as he throws, he's off again. This oh, one he won't, though. Oh, he is. Oh. oh. That'd be, that's a bit of phantom D action from both the Ellipsis players. Knew they couldn't get it, but got their bodies in the, in the way. Tried to distract from the eye line of the uh, receiver. So he set it there on the replay. Came down very bladey. And I think there was maybe just a hand to it from one of the boys. I'm not 100% sure who. But Lockton's bringing it forward. Moving to the far sideline. Oh, Lockton. See what I mean? See how far those, like, that, that's a dump and a swing. As we see Ooh. another turn. AJ sprinting to the disc. Donnelly with the run through D there. Good cut from Hatfield up the line. Brave cut. 
And another and a goal. AJ ain't going anywhere, he believes. So Hatfield to Young there. Every goal, and, and it's mostly AJ throwing him. Um, after every goal, AJ is looking over at his sideline. He's just pumping. He knows he's one of the spiritual leaders of this team. And then the leaders, leaders. Um, he knows that he needs to keep their energy up and about. He needs to keep their belief up and about. 10-6. Not close, not insurmountable. Well, they, can certainly, of, they can certainly come back from this. A couple of breaks changes everything. A couple of breaks does change everything. And it's interesting to score. see how... Um, how much one break can change mm. the mood and the vibe of a team? Yeah. If Fishwick can break back once, I think that the in their intensity will lift dramatically. Yeah. So here we are. Mikey Hatfield, one goal, one assist and one turn. Which is some pretty good stats to be sporting right now. Look for, for Fishwick. For Fishwick. Yeah. He's got a third, been involved in a third of their goals. So a slightly slower half, less points being scored in this half than yeah. you know, in the same and amount of in the time that's passed. Take the little wins. That's that's that needed to be an adjustment from Fishery. They haven't put that one out the back again, have they? Oh, I think it landed in field and then Rolled scooched up. out the back. So we're going to see it brought forward. And as we do, just another update: Sublime are up on Jugger seven six, and the Dice Boys are up on Manly. Just took half eight seven. Held it on the dump, going straight back to Keys there. Tight defense yeah. going back to Holden. He's looking to the center of the field, trying to tool it. AJ playing D now. AJ playing D. Moz called it. Yeah, let's take coach of the year. And there's the around. Sandbridge containing that. Pops it up. He's got Daly at halfway on the far sideline. Bissett getting involved in the play now. He's formed in an acreage. Finds Tullet again. Oh, he fakes the hammer. And there's Foreman again. Dumps back the around. The Quickly break, trying to see? contain Daly on the far sideline. No mark, though. Well, that's what happens when two breaks get thrown in a row. Your defender is just so out of position. Oh, threads the inside to Bissett. Oh, Gary with a little bit of footwork dancing there. He just toes it in. That was a high count. The, that first, um, from Daly, that first fake uh, on to Tulet on the dump was a fake. He did the exact same thing again, a lot more vociferously, and that was a get out of there, Tom. So watch this. He, so that's like, sorry. And then that, that's get out of there, Tom. <laughs> oh, well, I'm just going to have to throw the inside break. And it worked. It definitely worked. I think we've had another timeout here called right now. Get out. Get out. <laughs> All right, I'll do it myself. So another timeout called from Fishwick. We'll take this opportunity to have a quick break and we'll be back in a short minute. Always on the move. You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. Welcome back for the uh, coming out of the timeout. Um, interesting message out of the timeout. Uh, it was similar to what we were saying um, a few minutes ago. Uh, for so David 
um, their coach said, uh, and again, I'll have to paraphrase because some of it was, was fruity. Um, we know breaks don't come in ones. They come in twos and threes and fours. So he said, just keep fighting to the end. Let's get a break because we, you know, after that, that's when our energy can lift and we can get two or three. And speaking of breaks, I think we have some stats here available that we might get up on the screen there, Moz. So Fishwick have had seven break chances and have capitalised on none. But Ellipsis have had 10 break chances and have capitalised on four. Interesting, though, the clean holds, relatively even. Mm. Um, but it's no surprise that Fishwick have had more turns yeah. um, than the Ellipsis men. Yeah, I mean, it's the breaks and the break chances. That's the story. And with that, though, we haven't seen a break since the scoreline was at 3-8. It's been relatively trading since then, so Fishwick just need to get those breaks back now. Uh, I think this will be another one that's coming from the front. Yes, it is. Geez, they're, um, they're pretty pinpoint because they, those discs haven't rolled far, but um, they've rolled out the back, so it must be pretty close. Wind speed, negligible. And Fishwick kind of forgot the disc was checked in, so AJ's going to have to do something on an eight count, gets it out. Fardos with the disc now. AJ doing a load of work. Oh! Nice, Mikey. AJ's off. Mikey's going to stick it. And he pops it up. He's got three deep. And AJ somehow comes up with it. Here he is with Shallard looking for an option. Jackson now. Shallard going. And he gets it. That was some nice offense there from Fishwick. They did make Mikey Hatfield work a bit hard on that uh, that dub D there, but it was perfectly executed. Yeah, well, Mikey didn't have a lot of time because um, AJ was being engaged and, and Cupcake, uh, uh, Tulip was playing a really aggressive face mark. Usually just throw out into the space, but um, the handler then elected to go to Mikey, but he can't, Mikey had kind of one second to do it. So, yeah, he did need to bid. Um, but then after that, the flow opened up. Uh, what I loved seeing there was when that big shot from Mikey Hatfield went up, we actually saw three Fishwick receivers on the deeper side of that. Yeah, I didn't love that because I'd flash, but I, I was like, oh, no, <laughs> they're, they're going to look at each other and this thing's going to hit the and, deck. And, and no one's going to go for you, it. That's when you just pack her up and go. That's when you go down <laughs> to the pub. All right, boys. We're done. So Andrew Jackson here with four assists. Four of seven. That's a that's a big stat to have to his name right now. He's doing a lot of work on this Fishwick, Fishwick O line. And as we've seen now recently, he's coming back on the D line. Is he on? Uh, no, he's just no. to our left there. Sideline starting to ramp Side up as you can hear. Sideline's getting loud. We're nearly hitting the hour mark in this game, so we're getting towards the latter half. And uh, Sunder of all, but dispatch with Chile, 13-5 currently. So Chile, I think there's such a thing as you know playing your final early. I think their final yesterday was the quarter final. They peaked a bit early, did they, Moz? They did. Well, they needed to. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been in that game. As we see, good early showings from uh, Fishwick. Ellipsis just needed to retrieve ground. Uh, yeah, so we've got... Oh, Ooh. almost a D there from that shot from Daly to Chula and Swan working hard to get free diving on the yep. mark there. Finds Holden, McGuckin now on the far sideline. His D has really clamped down. The intensity of the defense from Fishwick has really changed. Oh, Swan with a laser through the keys. He's got Daly streaming deep, but he's covered. So we see he looks off and there's Foreman on the around flick. Got it done. Fishwick intensity is definitely lifted. But the question is, Moz, is did, it, did they do it too late? Yeah, I mean, we did say early on that the intensity from uh, Ellipsis defensively was grades above what Fishwick brought and that they were warming into it. But then, you know, the counter argument to that is, well, it's a semi. You, you, know, you can't really warm into a semi. You can warm into your first pool game of the tournament, but semis, probably not so much. So... Um, so yeah, I mean that 
I, I think you were talking about the stats early on, like the second half has been so much cleaner um, and so much more even from both teams. And that's um, right. The starts really the difference. The second half has definitely been a lot cleaner. Um, we haven't had any breaks since half, interestingly. Interestingly, so it's been four holds each uh, since half which is great for Fishwick that they've been maintaining those offensive holds. However, because in that first half, Ellipsis got up on so many breaks, yep. they're having to claw back. And that's a dwindling clock now. Yeah. And a dwindling timeline to 15. Big pull. That's a big pull. That's nice. That's a big pull. Probably won't roll out the back this no. time. Oh, Copland nearly there. Great throw, AJ. Inside to Shallard. Hatfield. Oh, he puts it up. He's got Donnelly deep. Just needs to stay in. And he does. Mike, he's had a few nice throws uh, this tournament, even this game. I think in uh, the last stream game, he put an absolute laser flick down the uh, far sideline. So... I don't know if he's playing Masters. I think it's just Shellard out of this team, but he'd be handy. And again, that's another clean hold for Fishwick. As we just said, we haven't had any breaks coming out. So here's that put from Hatfield again. Straight down that sideline, Donnelly just toes it in. That's, that's actually a really hard throw to make, Moz. Uh, just for the reason of it was a backhand down the line. Mm. So Hatfield had to pinpoint it in accuracy so that it curled out enough, came back in enough that Donnelly could catch it and it wouldn't have been caught out of field or didn't curve too back, too far back in field for the defender to get a hand to it. Yes, I agree. There was not a lot of uh, margin for error with that. That was line to line. But he nailed it. Wouldn't call it high percentage, but he nailed it. And just some comments on the uh, on the stream that we have Mikey playing Beach Worlds, we believe. Uh, okay. There's too many Did Australian teams going around at the moment, Moz, that people are on. Yeah, just <laughs> giving out jerseys to anyone, evidently. <laughs> That's a crack of me, not Mikey, by the way. Um, are you playing anything? I'm not. No. I'm not, unfortunately. You had your uh, your highlights were last week. My highlights were last weekend, Moz. Thank you for pointing that out. Silver medal. Silver medalist at Div Two Regionals. Pretty Nationals. happy for a team that didn't do any training. Nationals, don't sell yourself short. So, tool it there. Just one break. Just need one break. Let's see. Keys. He's got McGuckin on this sideline. Great throw. Sandbridge pressuring that. Oh. Almost getting there, Foreman getting big. Oh, big D there from Blacklock. McGuckin going the around to Chulet. Foreman's He's, playing a good game. Foreman's playing a pearler of a game. The mark just bid off on that one, and there's McGuckin. So this is great uh, vision from Keys because McGuckin had his hand up right over the far sideline, so it was like far away as you can get on the field in terms of when they're at where they're attacking. Had his hand up, Keys spots in. Saw it, assessed it, went, yep, why not? And threw it at a, sp a speed that only Guck could get it. So Keys with six assists now. Moz, of the 13 scored for the Ellipsis men so far, six of them have come from the John O'Keys assist. Oh, you'd have him in your top three, probably at number one <laughs> in terms of play. But, well, in terms of best on today. That's a great stat to have. Other stats, given we are getting questions about the weather. Uh, it's, uh, it's getting up to 17 today. Uh, fire danger is moderate. Sun protection is recommended from 10.30 to 2.20. The UV index predicted to reach 4, which is obviously, of course, a moderate. Uh, and no wind to speak of. So, John O'Keys, six assists and one block, as we did see that huge yeah, layout block from him earlier. Yeah, he's... Hopefully he gets a spot in the highlight reel later on. We've had a timeout called, unsurprisingly, again, Moz. Yeah, well, we're entering the fi final stages of the game. Um, Fishwick would be um, pretty long odds, not that we gamble on the sport, especially not with the Integrity Commission tent behind us. But uh, by, the, by the figures, we, would, uh, we wouldn't be expecting uh, Fishwick to come back, but... 
like we were saying, similar to the quarterfinals, when a team goes out, you get really flat. Now, the difference between going out in a quarter and going out in a semi is you've still got a medal to play for. That's correct. So, yes, we know which way this is probably going, barring a miracle, which we're all here for. Um, but how do you keep your momentum up, start the next game like you finished the last and, and still take home a bronze? And speaking of uh, momentum, just giving other updates, we have uh, the Sunder. Oh, so go the stats right now on the. So nine, nine break opportunities for yeah. Fishwick. That's the one. And they've utilised none of them. Ellipsis have done 12 or 4, but we've had five holds each since half. And just while we have the opportunity, Dice are up 11 8, and Juggernaut are up 8 7 on Sublime. Thank you for those stats, Simon. So going into the latter portion of this game now. And uh, just confirming for those who were reading between the lines, the other semi-final is done. Chile went down 15-5 to Sunder. So Sunder will be, we've got our first Finalists locked in. Sunder slice, that is. Yeah, I, I just knew I was going to say the wrong one, so I just said Sunder. Um, Sunder slice are the first finalists. Ellipsis knocking on the door to be the second. So young to AJ, he's working hard. Loose mark, trying to make sure he doesn't get those big looks off. Pickle. Uh, I haven't seen too many picks today, actually. We haven't, which is actually good. It means, it means the downfield's sorting their shit out. <laughs> yeah, and, and we see um, quick play, you know, because we've seen quick points. There's not fatigue. There's not miscommunications. Keep that momentum and that flow. So Young with disc on the far side, and he's engaging his dump. Oh, oh ho, ho. His shoulder. Cup break. Jackson Cup break. Jackson was asking for that. He's there got the break. Go. He's on the home field. Oh, Dinkleberg. What a day! Good stuff, young blood. Haven't seen him take many points, uh, take the field much this game, but you get your shot, you play it. Great team. Make an impact. The Dutch import there doing some big things. Arcing backhand to Lochnan. He's got a few streaming deep, and he blows the hammer. Who's he got there? He had Lou on the option, but Hatfield got into it. There might be a call of some kind. Uh, Mikey had position there, I think. I agree with you there, Moz. So uh, the reason that hammer went up is because AJ poached off. He came in on Tim McLeese, So you'll see here, AJ there, he was down there. So Mikey did well. Mikey's only got eyes for the disc, straight up. That is as clean as you like. That looks like a clean D to me. Still some discussion happening. I think the, think the opinion from Lou is that Hatfield backed into his space, but from what we can see on the stream there, it looks like Hatfield went straight up and it was a bit of a clean D. Uh, so it's outcome is a contested foul, so that means Lockton's going to get the disc back, which I think is actually a little bit of a gift to Ellipsis there. I, I don't know, and I think because we don't have them all the time, game advice is obviously just something we can get for the finals and the showcase, because I don't know if the players are always used to having them, and so they aren't used to then asking them. I don't know if the advisor was consulted there, but I reckon if they had been, there may, may have been a different outcome. I think you're right, Moz, but they sorted it out amongst themselves, and we tend to say, you know, disc karma. That's it, yeah. So we'll see what happens here. The disc is with Chu. He's looking for options. That's tough D there from Shallard, and he goes the inside. Timocles and others just absolutely shredding with that inside flick. They really are back with Timocles here. Yeah. Onto the open side. Andrews around there nice to Waylo. Back to Andrews. Copland. War. Oh. And he went the around to Dinkelberg. Alex Young. Uh, poached off his player there, yeah. came the, uh, into the lane to try and stop that one. Copland was there first, which opened up Dinkelberg in the backspace for the around flick. Uh, so that's 
uh, we've now got, uh, we see the game advisors be coming out on game point for Ellipsis. And that was a break for Ellipsis. The first break that we've seen this half now. So Ellipsis up 14-8, their first chance at, at match point here. Not the semi-final we expected to be seeing. Yeah, look, I think Ellipsis definitely coming in as favourites, but because Fishwick had been so unpredictable with a couple of upsets. We just have Moz here trying to get the stats from Mish Phillips on how many clubs she's played for. Dinkelberg here had just got double happiness because as we remember seeing that massive layout block there from him, Moz, in the central portion of the field. And yeah, good point. <laughs> and as you said, you're going, if you're only coming on for minimal points, you've got to make your impact. So if anyone wants to put some, uh, some guesses in, I've asked Mish how many clubs. She said she's going to need about 15 minutes to count them all up. Disc has gone up. There's Sam Bridge to Jackson. Unsurprising is playing this offensive point. Clutch moment. Young. Looks off fast. A little bit of a junky look here from Ellipsis. Haven't seen this so far this game. Oh, around to Sam Bridge in the center of the field. Beautiful work. There's Fardos. And there's Dane Klukin in the deep space. Fishwick. Clean offensive hold, but is it too late in the game mods that they're bringing out? This beautiful offense. Absolutely it is, Oakley. This is what you needed to start with and maybe put a couple of breaks in too. But hey, why, why would you listen to me? Um, Michelle's given an answer on how many women's teams she's played for. Has also played for an open team, being Fishwick. So if you care to put a guess in the chat, we will send you an ulti-TV prize pack. On the replay, we have Sam Bridge there. To Svados, who looks and finds Klukin in the deep space. So another opportunity at game point here for Ellipsis. This time they're coming out on offense. Uh, and, I mean, the stats don't lie, Moz. Fishwick haven't broken Ellipsis yet. So uh, it looks like Ellipsis should just have this one cleanly in the bag. I think they are putting on, I mean, they're running quite a short O-line anyway, but it does look like their normal O-line. Well, they got Tim McLeese, was Tim McLeese playing O? Maybe Tim McLeese did play the last uh, O point, I believe. I'm going to have Shallard with the pool. So up next, uh, hop on over to the other stream. We have the Manly Mavericks versus Ellipsis Asterix. That the other semi. We see a brick. First brick of the game. And if you are trying to get a break and hold on to the game and inject some defensive pressure, the last thing you want is a brick. Anyway. Luke Stark, you're a winner. She, uh, Mish Phillips has played for seven women's team, one open team, and she could not even start to count them amount of mixed team. So Luke Stark, take a bow. Luke Stark dialing in from Queensland there. Cupcake unleashes, he's got McGucking deep, and what a put! Cuppers jacked that from the uh, brick mark and just kept walking. There he is, Mike's got him, he's just going, yep, that's done. And that's it, Ellipsis just sealed their spot in another Div 1 final. How's the swag from Cuppers? You ever see, there was this golf tournament where Tiger Woods puts a putt, about an 18 foot putt. As soon as he hits it, he walks off and the ball just goes and rolls. He rolls over, shakes the hand of his opponent and that was, uh, that was a cupcake version of that. Threw it long, didn't even bother to look whether uh, McGuckin had caught it, but that's representative of just, uh, I guess, how easy Ellipsis have found it today. Really sticking through their primary, um, as we go to get the stats in a moment, sticking to their primary plays, trusting those primary structures. So when we look at the stats here, we had Sam McGuckin with four goals one assist and one block in this game. John O'Keefe's being another massive stat grab. And on the screen here, Ellipsis five, taking five out of 14 breaks. Fishwick taking none of their break opportunities. Good amount of clean holds each, but Fishwick just turning the disc over more often, which gave Ellipsis those break opportunities and they absolutely punished them for it. Yeah, and I think if you're 
this week. You got it. Your mindset's got to be there's one game to go. If we get that game, we get to take a bronze medal, and that's that's the stat that you got to arrest. You go, hey, we got the disc ten times off these guys. Didn't put it in once. So tomorrow, when playing Chile, when we get the disc back, actually put it in because some some um, real scholars on the chat. Uh, you can't go zero to ten on break chances and win. That's correct. This no, is correct. It's yep. <laughs> deep, but it's correct. <laughs> And so that's it. That's the end of the men's semi-final here on day three of Div 1 Nationals. We have a cracker of a game coming up next with the women's semi. Uh, I'm Oakley Mullen. I'm Andrew Maroney. Thanks for dialing in and we'll be seeing you soon. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. TV.